Hello and welcome to the Build With Bear Workshop. My name is Pat Bear. I'm here to build a Lego set and hang out with you. First and foremost, I'm going to throw the Bear Cave, the Lego, the Scythe emote in the chat. Uh, and you can respond with your own. Dirty uh, makes a reference uh, to uh, uh, Sergeant Slaughter returning. Uh, no, that is not the wrestling news that I'm talking about. Um, uh, hello. Uh, I mentioned this on off stream uh, in the pre-show, uh, the testing. Uh, hi, Lashbrook. Welcome, welcome. That um, uh, various reports are saying that uh, WWE wrestler uh, in the in 205 Live, the cruiserweight division, but had most recently been seen on uh, on SmackDown. Uh, he moved to SmackDown and was doing great work there as of literally yesterday's uh, um, airing of SmackDown. Drew Gulak is reportedly. Uh, no longer with the company. He on uh, uh, today apparently his uh, information was moved to the alumni section, uh, and uh, that is the report. No official word from either Drew or WWE. Um, and I'll just say this: I love Drew Gulak. I love his work. Um, I will. It'll be a, a shame um, if uh, if he's no longer uh, wrestling for WWE. Um, because he's a fantastic worker, and we actually haven't seen all that he can offer. He's um, a, an amazing uh, grappler and uh, mat technician, um, understands the business very well, excellent teacher, so I just naturally assumed he would work there for a number of years and eventually end up being a trainer in a, in a backstage role because they would be uh, it, they would be lucky to have him. Um, also, uh, in the independent scene, not under the name Drew Gulak, but under another alias, uh, the man can work the ropes. And uh, Harold is now hosting the stream. Thank you, Harold. Uh, did, did not show up. Uh, do not know why, but I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, my overlay may be a little weird, but thank you very much for hosting, Harold. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, Drew Gulak is a fantastic worker. But yes, under another name, he... Uh, worked uh it's a high flyer and it was a direct opposition to the the kind of like character he originally prepared of the no fly zone uh but um he's a fantastic worker in that regard and uh seems like the story is contract negotiations fell through yeah and so drew is an interesting thing right um so the deal that 205 got was a lot of the 205 division uh, that, that's weight, that is 205 pounds or less, the cruiserweight division. Um, a lot of guys came in through a tournament and came in under the, the indie name that they were using. And WWE doesn't generally enjoy that. It's it, it's very rare to have someone come in with their name. Uh, Harold just cheered 49 bits. Thank you so much, Harold. Let's really all applause there. Throw the barricade, the Lego, sight the boat in there. Thank you very much. Uh, bits and coins, always appreciated. So thank you, Harold, for that. Uh, yeah, if anybody who's here has not already thrown in their emotes, feel free to do that now. Say hi that way. Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, so, Drew, that's the name he uses on the indies. And that is kind of rare for WWE. Usually WWE doesn't enjoy that. They have people rename themselves. They want to be in control of the, the license. You know, their, their, their whole thing. So, um that does make things difficult. He moved to SmackDown, which means his contract must have changed quite a bit. I don't know what that means for him going forward. Um, I will say this. His last WWE.com video, which is on their Twitter, is he is a really emotional, really nice thing. Uh, and as of today, he was, you know, doing videos with uh, back and forth with, uh, with Daniel Bryan. Um, so, uh, I hope that he lands on his feet somewhere great, um, and cause he's a fantastic worker and, and it was a pleasure. The, uh, one, uh, time I got to work with him was, it was a joy. Uh, he's fantastic. And, uh, you know, I hope, I hope he ends up somewhere great and gets to do good work. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I was surprised. I think of, uh. A lot of the 205 people, like he made, he made the move. He made the move to SmackDown and, uh, and has been doing the best 
works other than his title reign, which is was a few months, was only a few months. Uh, you know, this is the best part of his career working with Daniel Bryan. Uh, like meant that he's been wrestling very quality workers. He had a storyline which was interesting, and uh, yeah, that's a that is a bummer. Uh, okay, well, I hope he lands on his feet. I hope he ends up doing cool shit. What are we doing? What's what's our cool shit? Now that I'm gonna first, I'm gonna retweet my tweet. Uh, we're gonna get into it, uh, and then we'll uh, we'll have some fun here. Uh, building time. It's building time. Uh, building time. Um, oh, uh, Eag just redeemed the gong. It's time to hit that gong. Let's go to the overhead, and then we will gong it up. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, so that there's that. All right, so let's hit this. Thank you for hitting that gong. Appreciate it. Using those uh, channel points to hit that gong. Uh, so, uh, I disassembled the monster truck because this is a three-in-one. So, we did the monster truck. Now, we're going to do the tractor. Or we're going to do the, the truck. the And then, we're going to do the tractor. Uh, I'm on a ballistic course for Mars and space engineers for almost 11 and a two hours. Feels like it. Okay. All right. One and a half hours, it feels like. Okay. Dirty. I read that as 11 slash two, and I was like, what does... One and a half hours. Okay, well, Dirty, good luck to you. Um, get your ass to Mars, as they say. Uh, we did not, but I did not disassemble the burger because the burger rules, and I didn't feel like taking apart the burger. My hope is I won't need any of the burger components for the other two. But the thing with a three-in-one, if you've never worked with a three-in-one before, uh, most of the pieces go to the biggest uh, showcase piece. Uh, a, a vehicle or, or object and then the other objects are easier to build they do require that but they don't require all the pieces um, so like this one is, is you know you're not it's not going to need doors because uh, we're going to start with the tractor here um, so it is a pretty simple thing to put together uh, it does mean that I have all of the pieces out instead of like opening a bag at a time I have to open like I just have all the pieces out um which is a little different than normal. But, uh, but yeah. Um, I went to the pizza place that reopened pretty recently. Uh, I'll say this. So, plus side, everybody was wearing masks. And, it you know, people were, were giving each other space and picking up the things they needed. I got what I wanted. I saw the guys that, you know, were working there before they closed. They've been working there for a long time. That was nice to see uh, see my dudes, and that was cool. But um, I'll say this. It was a little weird that they set up a couple tables outside. Now, they didn't have, like, stools or anything. They just had a couple of their tables, like, outside. And there were, like, people eating at the tables. And that doesn't feel right. It didn't feel right at the time. I looked at it like, N no, get get out of here. Everybody get out of here. Like, everyone, you're getting your shit to go, and you should go. Like, I don't care if it's nice out. I don't care if it's in the mid-70s. Like, get out of here. Uh, that felt very weird and not cool. So, like, uh, I don't like that. Uh, there are just a lot of people out about because it's nice out in New York right now. So a lot of people are out and about. I'm trying not to be. I'm trying to keep my distance. Yesterday, I uh, walked uh, and I had to, had the grocery shop. Had the grocery shop. Had to get it done. Uh, was in need of things. Had to go. Went, got groceries. And then I'm coming back with groceries. And I see across the street. Somebody that I know from like comedy, uh, and no, by no I mean like, you know, we recognize each other. I recognize her from her jacket. She recognizes me. We're both wearing masks. We're like, oh, we know each other. Uh, and it's that moment where it's like, I'll, I'll admit, I'll, you know, Zoom calls and stuff like that. I've been seeing people that that I know, but outside my landlord, I haven't really seen people that I 
I know personally from my personal life. You know, there, there's nobody on my quarantine. That is a thing that people have like, oh, well, this is our next door neighbor. They live alone. We're not seeing anybody. So the three of us, ha like me and my roommate and this person hang out, we're on the quarantine. Like, I know that, that that exists. I don't have that. I don't have anyone on my team. So it was weird to see someone I know in real life, like out. Um, and I, I waved and they waved and then they yelled, Pat Bear, I want to hug you. And then I don't know how that became pointing. And then we just started doing finger guns at one another. Just like, just like a moment. And then went about our way. And, you know, I came home and they went to go do whatever they were doing. And it was nice. But I, uh, I don't know. I feel, I felt very weird. It was, it, it, it was a, it was an odd moment. Um, it was a nice human connection, but I don't know. Uh, like I said, I, I did a Zoom hangout. I did a Zoom hangout tonight, just before the stream. I left the Zoom hangout to come do this because, uh, I'm, uh, well, I'm here. I felt, uh, you know, had to leave to get ready to do the stream, but it was nice to talk to friends who I have not chatted with in a while kind of have that connection uh it's not the same that was the rev revelation i had yesterday uh i've been trying to pretend like it's the same but it's not um i can be a very solitary person uh hey pat uh bar one and bar two are open but in the street i gave my friend a giant foam cowboy hat to help them reopen okay Uh, all right, Mr. Bob. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I don't know. It is a, it is a weird thing, um, that I kind of tried to convince myself. Cause like I said, I am, a, I, I, I like my, my me time. I, uh, I'm, it took me a long time to, of self-realization and, and stud, self-study to fully understand the concept that I am a introvert that likes performing. Cause I always felt weird that like, Oh, I like performing. I like being the center of attention. I like doing stuff. Uh, I like being out and about and, and, and doing stuff like that. You know, this is the things I like, um, and, and being on stage, but that's probably weird because I don't like, you know, I, I need me time. I need, uh, I get, I get to the point where I have to like, you know, escape from that. I, I get drained and I was like, oh, I'm actually just an inf introvert that likes performing. That is a thing that exists. Oh, okay. Now I know that about myself. Now I know why I bail out and have to go and sleep. Why I really need a lot of sleep during conventions. Whereas other people are go, go, go. Got it. Figured it out. Uh, they got the town council to approve outside seating. So half the tables are in the street now with a Jersey barrier surrounding them. Yeah, I don't, you know, you've seen, uh, there's some places where they're like, we put mannequins around so you don't sit where the mannequins are, or we put, uh, we put, uh, uh, blow up dolls around to let you know like this is a no sit zone because there's the dolls and I get all of that and I understand that eventually we're going to have to like figure that out um like the Miami Dolphins are like trying to propose how that seating would work uh because they want to have games as soon as possible and I like that's where the mannequins are, Mr. Bob? Yeah. Look, I, I get it. I also hate it. Also, uh, that is a three-star Michelin restaurant that count that costs about $1,000 per party. Okay, yeah, no, I don't. <sighs> As I said, 
I get it, but I don't think I like it. Uh, we talked about this, the video that I watched on Thursday right before the stream and how there was a uh, uh, an NXT WWE employee at a Walmart without a mask and their husband their boy fiance, sorry, but boyfriend fiance, who was also a professional wrestler who has been let go, uh, and they were out and about, and they're in Florida, and they went to go to a uh, a uh, a Walmart, and they didn't have masks on, and how that's like, I do not enjoy seeing that. Uh, it's just. Uh, uh, I have a scheme to get better pictures, but I need a wheel man. Uh, it's just, it's all weird, and I don't, I'm not going to pretend to like it. Uh, I understand that businesses have to open, people want to, to, people have to earn a living, and I, and I respect the hustle that people are, people are trying to figure out. How, how to survive and how to do business uh, but I'm just so scared uh, you know we worry about our our immediate family we worry about our friends we worry about our neighbors we worry about ourselves and we worry about strangers and it's just such a rough weird thing that I'm like you know still trying to figure out how I feel about all of it. I'm going to talk about convention stuff, talk about travel, but also like I would go back to work. You know, I, I don't have full-time employment with anything. My part-time work at the theater that I was working at, the Brooklyn Comedy Collective, I guess I'm going to go back when they reopen. You know, I, I'd like to know um, what... Uh, I'd, I'd like to know what the the plan is for for wiping down seats and um, and that that sort of thing. Uh, you know the limit. To, you know how if they're going to limit how many people are going to be in there and how we set up the seating arrangements and how we run shows. These are things that I, I have not heard yet. Uh, uh, I got to see people I've not seen in three months. Mr. Bob, I, I mean, I, I'm happy that, that, that it's low. Uh, it is a thing of like, yeah, there are, there are parts of this country where it's it's not high. Um, it's just that the almost every place that is reopening is seeing a huge increase in the number of cases. Um, and there's like a direct correlation between those two things. So I'm just generally pretty worried about that stuff. But like I said... Uh, I'd be willing to at least, you know, talk to my employer if that is a thing that they would like to do. If they would like to have me come in and tech shows, uh, at the very least, I am willing to talk about it. I uh, kind of need to know what's going on with that, but still willing to talk. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm just worried for people. It's just a, a tough thing. And I hope that people are uh, going to be okay. And that they're figuring stuff out. That's all we can really do right now. Um, let's see. Uh, I got to have a conspiracy conversation with my pops today. That had me laughing about his theories. Well, that's good. At least you could laugh about it. Um, yeah, I've had a... Uh, I've pretty much... The big conspiracy people in my family don't really talk to me much anymore uh, because I am not um, fun. I'm not a fun person to them. I, I, I mean, I'm a good time, y'all. Like, I, I can be serious and I could be, um, you know, pragmatic about things and responsible about things, but also like, I'm a pretty fun dude when when it's time to like family gatherings and good times. But there's a portion of my family that just does not think I'm a good time because I don't want to deal with their bullshit. 
Um, and they're distant relatives, but like, yeah, he started noticing how few and fewer of them were, you know, like, oh, they're, they're not in the Facebook group, the family Facebook group anymore. Weird. Or, oh, they're, uh, oh, I'm not friends with a few of them on Facebook anymore. Weird. Okay. Sure. I guess. Cool, cool, cool. I, yeah, I just, uh, at a certain point, I was just like, done dealing with that stuff. Because whatever. I'm a grown man. And like, you don't choose your family. So, I don't, yeah, I, I don't got time, I don't got time for it. Uh, Mr. Bob, I agree with you. Um, uh, I think a lot of the, uh, you know, not all, but all, uh, family queen tough. To, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, it can be. Um, it it helps. I mean, I've always been helped by having uh, a fam direct family, like my parents and I agree on a lot of things. We're very close, and we are similar in a lot of our thoughts and, and feelings, and that is helpful when you're trying to like become a person you want to be and you get support from your family. I've been grateful for that and very lucky to have that. But some of my distant, like, yeah, like just some people in my life that uh, through happenstance, like we don't see eye to eye on things and it's sometimes very tough. Uh, but uh, the nice thing is that not all of them, but a lot of their kids uh, are a little more on the way, are, are a little more on my wavelength, and so that has been nice. Because uh, for a lot of people, I am the, uh, uh, I'm the well. For for some of my relatives, I'm like the weird guy. I'm the weird black sheep. Like left everything. What am I? Do you want to be an actor or be what? Huh? I, what? He lives in New York and works at comedy theater. What? That doesn't make sense. Um, but for some people who I'm related to, it's like, Pat's like doing it. And that always made me happy to, to you know, be able to talk about weird shit with my young, the younger generation of like, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm no hero, but I am trying to do a thing that I want to do. And that has been pretty rewarding for me anyway. Uh, uh, I'm trying to be Switzerland, my family, but there's a portion. We exercised from the tree a few years back. And they showed up after a great uncle's funeral with a U-Haul truck. Oh. Yeah, Dirty, that's... Uh, I mean, that's a way to be. Yikes. Uh, the opening today has been highly monitored by the local government and police. I'm unsure it's going to continue because in two days we have had a lot of people travel in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Mr. Bob. Uh, one of the things I'm worried about are people who are like, oh, the beaches are open in South Carolina. I'll go to the beach. I want to go to the beach. And like, great. And then you're going to, like, go back eventually, right? Like, the hotels are opening in South Carolina. And I'm like, that sounds awful. Oh, no. Didn't we blame Northerners traveling to Florida for Florida's problems? And Georgia's problems? Didn't we blame that on travelers? Oh, boy. Yeah, it's just, it, it's scary shit. Yeah, people are crossing state lines to go to bars in Wisconsin. Yeah, of course they are. Like, part of me gets it. Like I, like I said, yesterday I felt better than I have in a really long time. And part of that was because I had a human interaction with someone that I know. And I don't know super well. We're not super close. But, like, it felt great to see this person and to, like, talk to them. And like a moat in person. Like I get it. I understand. Like the, you know, like the idea, uh, 
technically the whole thing is travelers with the first cases being airport workers. Yeah. Yeah, because people are traveling from all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's it's, it's getting moving around. Yeah. No. Yeah, Mr. Uh, yeah, Harold says uh, that uh, restaurants uh, are... Uh, Um, are open for dine-in. I'm not going to be eating anywhere. I would, I would, uh, yeah, I would suggest still, if you can, if folks can't isolate, please still isolate. Oh, uh, uh, uh Julian, uh, Hearthstone says, I've got Prime and no one else on Twitch to give my free sub to, so happy birthday. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that very much. Let's hit the applause. Uh, we can throw, uh, the Bear Cave the Lego and the Scythe the Moat in the chat. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, a reminder to folks, uh, that, uh, oh, Journey wants to hear that gong, that you can use your Twitch Prime, uh, if you have Amazon Prime, you link your Amazon or your Twitch, you can do that. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Hit the gong, because Dirty wanted me to hit that gong. I'm going to hit it better. There we go. That's better. Thank you, uh, very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, um... But uh, subscriptions and uh, are always appreciated. Harold also wants me to hit that gong, so it's go it's more more gong time. I've been grade get grading takeout and some uh, show Papa John's fell into the shit list despite being delivered. Yeah, I've been doing delivery when I can. Like contactless delivery has been good. I, I mean, I'm cooking a lot. I got food. Uh, I've kind of stopped doing grocery delivery because uh, the uh, the couple people that have been doing it like are are definitely going for volume, and I respect the hustle, but I don't like uh, bread that's just my my loaf of bread was was not was at the bottom of the bag and I'm just like nah man I don't need pasta sauce on top of my bread please uh Lashbrook you should eat something uh yeah no that's what I'm, that's Mr. Bob yeah the app is supposed to like text you and be like hey come get this and then you go and you wait and you get this I've been doing the thing where I'm on the stoop and I say there's a spot on my the gate that leads up to the stoop and there's a spot there that you can leave things and I have a little piece of tape there and uh, taped to that piece of tape is an envelope with my cash tip uh, because I want to make sure they get money directly in their pocket uh, which I'm running out of like $5 and $10 bills so I'm going to figure that out at some point but you know I'm doing that and I'm like here you go thank you very much uh, that is like and that way I can see them coming and I get a little fresh air and then I go and get my food. Because uh, I'm getting sick of salads and pasta because that is what I've been making primarily is salads and pasta, which I love, but I am getting a little tired of it. I'm going to get Chinese food again tomorrow. We all, I talked about this on Tuesday, my Chinese place, or Wednesday they reopened. My Chinese place reopened. They have been closed since uh, the uh, stay-at-home orders started going out. They reopened this week. Just one person working and one person on delivery at a time. It's kind of like three people working in there. Um, and uh, I uh, I went in there uh, and got stuff on Wednesday and it ruled. Uh, and so I'm going to have to... Or did I do it Tuesday? Tuesday or Wednesday. I can't remember when I went. But I went there this week. Um, when they reopened and now I have to go back and I'm probably going to go back tomorrow and get chicken and string beans uh, get the chicken and string beans combination fried rice and just enjoy food I really like uh, I did him at a local Chinese place due to all this so that's nice at least yeah you did find your local oh you found one oh nice yeah I mean like I said my local place shut down like immediately like and I understand it, uh, why, um, but I'm happy they reopened. Uh, it's still wild seeing who includes major chains, uh, who including major chains are taking this seriously or not. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Bob, um, you know, I think like there's, the thing is my immediate neighborhood, there aren't any chain, there's only one chain restaurant in my immediate neighborhood, uh, and I say restaurant. And when I say restaurant, I mean McDonald's. Uh, 
there's one chain near me that is McDonald's. Uh, and they, I mean, they had tape. They got rid of all the chairs and benches. They turned all the trash cans around so you don't loiter. Uh, I, I only looked in. I got delivery once because I got my nugget fix. And I've been good since and I haven't gone back. Uh, I regret to inform us, folks, that I need two pieces from the burger. And I have to tempor I have to take apart the burger. And I am very disappointed to be saying that I'm taking apart the lettuce from the burger needs to come off. And I'm very unhappy about that. That I have to disassemble part of this burger. But it's only some of the lettuce at least so far. Because these pieces do not have any more of them. But most of the burger is still intact. R.I.P. Burger, yeah. But I mean, it's still there. It's just it, the burger now has less lettuce. That's frustrating. I wish that was not a thing that I was reusing. Uh, no one is shutting off credit card signatures. Um, I will say this. Uh, yes, tap to pay. Uh, totally agree with you, Mr. Bob. Uh, so McDonald's, a thing that they did was they have, you know, like McDonald's, Burger King, um, I think Wendy's, some of the Wendy's do this. They have the machines. They just touch things. They turn those off. And that's probably for the best. But it does mean that you have to go and talk to a person. And then you got to like... But yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to tap to pay. I'm trying to, you know, do whatever. I'm trying to like avoid that when I can. Uh, there was an eight, There's an ATM near me that is part of a business that is closed. But the ATM is sticks outside of it. And so I've been, I was using that ATM to get money out because my bank is very far away. Uh, my local bank is not, in, you know, my branch is not near me. Um, and so I haven't been going to that. Uh, the restaurant, uh, my B&L manages, closes, closes for the duration uh, and sold all the expired food to employees for third of the cost. Well, there you go. Uh, me and the Taco Bell guy pointed our things at each other, and it was magic. Yes, Mr. Bob. Uh, contextless pay rules. I mean, that's like, you know, obviously like delivery it rules as well, right? Just like get that shit done, get it taken care of, send it out. Like, don't worry about it. Let's like try to limit our contact if we can and just get it done however else we can do, we can do it. Uh... My local R oh, Arby's uh, and Taco Bell have been holding the car terminal out the drive-thru, which is both smart and wild to see. Yes, that is wild. Oh, man. There, so, New York City has one Arby's. It used to, they used to have one in Queens, and then that went away. And then there was one in Manhattan, and that went away. And then there's a new one, like two to three years old that's still the new one to me that is uh, but to go to that Arby's I would have to get on the subway and I have not been on the subway since March since the beginning of March because I hadn't been on for a couple of weeks when uh, we, we started taking the state home seriously uh, so I have no interest in getting on the subway just to go to Arby's. And I haven't looked to see if how expensive it would be to have uh, like a DoorDash situation for Arby's. I have not looked into it. Uh, I mean, it's a it's a distance enough away that it, it would not be wise. Probably my food would be cold and cold Arby's same cold, cold Arby's sandwiches aren't great. I mean, their fries are still good because they're beautiful, but. 100%, Mr. Bob. Uh, the subway is not a thing that I would get on in this current situation. I cannot see myself getting on the subway for a very, very long time. Uh, that does not seem like a reasonable thing to do. Uh, so I, I will... Uh, do my damnedest. I mean, the culprit of the New York situation, Mr. Bob, is twofold. We, there are a lot of us, and we don't take, we weren't, we were not and are not taking it seriously enough. 
And so one of the ways that that transpires is, well, people are on the subway that shouldn't be on the subway. Uh, there are too many people who are not, there are too many people who are under a loose definition of essential. There are, uh, they, they are not taking, like they, like everybody else, is not taking cleaning and disinfecting and protection seriously. And it is part of a, a larger problem. Um, but it is also, yeah, it's definitely part of it. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know, you know. Um, so I try to stay positive about things and I try to keep like to keep uh, positivity alive and, and find ways to to be excited about things and uh, and look forward to things. Um, uh, it's hard, but it, it feels necessary. I've had a few, you know, setbacks uh, professionally and in various ways and personally. Uh, uh, and that has been uh, hard, but uh, it is... Uh, yeah, I mean, like, none of this is easy. None of this is supposed to be easy or supposed to feel good or make sense or, uh, like, it, you know, if you're if you're, you're feeling down or you're feeling helpless or, or lost, like, uh, or defeated, like, yeah, I'm not here to tell you don't feel that way. Um, like, it's, it's a, for some, these are unprecedented times for others. This is the latest and an escalating amount of nonsense. Um, but uh, yeah, I think like, I will say this. Um, this is not the new normal. There, While there is no going back to the old days, you have to think of them as the before times and think of them and think of the now and then the future times. I think that's important. I think a lot of people are like, we got to get back to normal. We got to get back to the way things were. We got to go back to that. And it's just like, no, we can't. Uh, we can't. It's different now. I am not saying this is the new normal. I am saying there will be a new normal. If it is this, I don't know. I don't think it's this. I think there is a different. There is a new. And there is a new normal coming. But it is not going to be the old normal. Because that old, that normal is done. We are done with that normal. That's done. It's gone. Now we get new shit. And some of those things are compromises and some of those things are changes and some of those things are possibilities and some of those things are exciting and some of those things are terrifying and some of those things are un unfortunate and uncomfortable and shitty. But it is my belief, my firm belief, that uh, humanity is pretty good at surviving utter bullshit. And so that's exciting to see that. Um, we'll see. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I would not say that I am optimistic, but I will say that I am not currently living in despair. And not despairing is the best I can do right now, the way my brain works, the way my heart feels, the way I look at things and look at you know the immediate and the long term and all of that. I cannot make, I cannot say that like, I, I, that I am somebody who is like pie in the sky uh, like 
oh, this is going to be this and this, this. Like, I'm not thinking, you know, I'm not going to lie about that stuff. But at the same time, uh, I'm not doom and gloom despair, Pat Bear. Uh, there is no despair in Pat Bear. Um, there's sadness, but there's not despair. Uh, and that's like the best I can do right now is is like think like, okay, well, some things are going to happen and some things are going to change and some things are going to be good. And I'm going to figure that out. And I'm going to find things to get excited about and find things to look forward to and find things to be okay with. And I hope that you all do the same. Um, uh, like tomorrow. I'm going to watch my Sunday pleasure stream. The thing I look forward to when I think about, oh, it's Sunday. I'm going to watch Loading Ready Runs Animal Crossing stream. Kathleen's Island Tours. Where folks from Loading Ready Run, friends of the site and all that, they visit each other's islands in Animal Crossing. And they go to people that are users, that are that are uh, fans of the site who belong to their Discord that have like said like, oh, hey, here's my house. And they pick people and they go check it out. And it's just chill. And I don't play Animal Crossing, but it's chill and great. And one of my favorite things is when someone does something cool and or different or weird, and then people are like, I'm going to steal that. And they get inspired. And it's just fucking nice. It's just fucking so nice on a Sunday. And, like, it is a thing I look forward to. And it's so small. And it's not much. But, God damn it. Like, that's something that I can be like, okay, well, at least I have this. And I think, like, that right now is, like, you know, and things change. I'd say one of the shows I look forward to the most uh, is going on hiatus. Gal and Dino, which we'll talk about in the second hour. This ep- this week's episode uh, aired today. That is going on hiatus. And that makes sense because some of it is done live action. And so, yeah, it makes sense that they ran out of stuff they had filmed. Because production had to get halted. So, yeah, that makes sense. And I, am I disappointed by that? Sure. But there's other things to look forward to. And there are other things coming up there. Harold is excited for NASCAR. Yeah. Like, you know, NASCAR is a thing that people really like who don't, you know, and it is a thing that works for them in a visual medium. They could watch and enjoy it. Uh, they, you know, it is it is an event that is fun to be there in person, but to see it on television or to watch it on stream, that it's also enjoyable. So that's great. That is a thing to look forward to. I'm glad you have that. Um, we have to uh, find those things that we can be excited about. And uh, and it rules to have those things. It's great that we can have those things in our life. Um, because, you know, th- there's little things that kind of keep us going. And keep us positive and keep us from giving into to negative thoughts and negative energy and it's like if we can have those things fuck yeah uh, I, uh, I'm all for it um, uh, trying to be emotionally available in this time has been trying for some people myself included uh, we're like huh I got I cried today a little bit, got a little cry in today because the latest episode, our latest video for the Bon Appetit YouTube channel was a uh, a super cut of a bunch of different people covering the It's Alive theme, which is uh Brad Leone's uh uh has has a a a, a video series for for Bon Appetit. Uh, and there's a theme song. And they asked like months ago for people to uh, cover and submit their covers of the theme. And there's a super cut of it. And like a bunch of people made the choice that, well, if I'm going to cover the It's Alive theme, 
uh, on my guitar or on whatever on my piano or my keyboard I should do it in my kitchen because it because it's a cooking show so I should probably uh, cover it in the kitchen and like so many people thought of that and that makes me laugh and some people like did it very traditional and some people did it weird and yes some people made it ska which good and some people were like oh it's this theme but I I'm a DJ so this is my interpretation or I'm playing a weird instrument or several weird instruments or I'm doing it by cutting up sounds of me cook of like preparing food uh and like it doesn't mean anything, but it did make me cry because it was really nice and it was really creative and interesting to see people like and their interp like people have written lyrics for the the song, which does not have lyrics, um, and people like made up their own lyrics to it, and it, uh, yeah, it was like really fun and and nice, and you know it's like. There are people like working together and collaborating. There was clearly some families doing it together. And they're just like, I don't know. It made me feel good to think about like people out there that were like, oh, yeah, I could I could record that. I'll do that. I don't know. Got me. Got me in the in the heart. Uh, I'll say this. It doesn't take much. Right now, uh, it's like, uh, we'll talk about it in the 10 o'clock hour, uh, but uh, an episode of an anime today got me because I was like, no, you're an over-the-top comedy. What are, you, what are you doing being poignant and sweet? What is this? No, get out of here. I don't even know if it was supposed to be that or if that's my interpretation because that's the Pat Bear I am right now is I'm like just broken in this way and getting emotional. Like, I don't know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so that was a good episode. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, some good stuff going on. Uh, and we'll talk about that again in the, in the 10 o'clock hour, 10 o'clock Eastern hour. So in a little bit, we'll talk about this week's anime, but like, yeah, there's some poignant anime shit going on. And, uh, I don't know. Well, even Gal and Dino was also pretty sweet. Uh, even though it's very weird. Um, it's so weird, but it was also very sweet. Uh, and it's like, okay, well, good. All right. I think that's, yeah, it does not take a lot for me to just be like, oh, all right, well, here's here's something real wholesome and nice, and oh, but this is me feeling so, like, thankful about this thing. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm usually fairly self-aware when I am in a state. Also, yesterday was... Oh, I, you know, I'm not going to delve too much into it here on the stream, but uh, um, I do appreciate everybody that helped me out yesterday. Um, I had uh, a, a bit of a bad day, and uh, I, I am uh, I'm not like uh, I'm a little out, out of sorts, and I'm figuring and trying to figure it all out, trying to like stay above water. It's been it's been a rough time to do that. Um, if a few freelance people would fucking pay me the money they owe me for the work I did, a few people that I freelance for, I should be specific about, that would be really nice. But, uh, yeah. the Look, I didn't, I didn't want this part of my life at all. I've never wanted this part of my life. Um, I never set out to be a freelance dude. I, that's not true. I did that for a little while. So, um... Uh, those but pre-stream era, pre-stream Pat Bear, uh, pre-Pax Pat Bear, before I was doing Pax stuff, um, I was in charge of the tech at the Chelsea location for the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater. This is before there was a East Village, which is now defunct, but there was one. Before that was, when that was still a thought someone was having. I was in charge and I was working, I was full-time and I was a salaried employee. 
but I was working more than full time. I was working a lot and I was getting burned out. I was working so much. And a thing that was happening was I had my schedule had to be around other people. And so my hours were really all over the place and I was never really in control of my own schedule. So, and for a long time, that wasn't a problem until it was a problem when I wanted to do things for myself. The whole point of like working in this comedy was like to do more comedy things. And this was in an era. Some of y'all are, will remember this golden era. Now, this is a golden era for me and my, my type. I'm talking about the era, the pre, because it, it, you can look at it as Zack and Miri make a porno is the beginning of the end of it. When Seth Rogen was a leading man in movies and not like, oh, isn't it funny that he's the leading man? When it was like, you want Seth Rogen in your movie. Seth Rogen type became the thing that people wanted for things. Television, movies, commercials. Seth Rogen type was suddenly in demand in a way it hadn't been before. And uh, I'll let you in a little, a little thing, uh, uh, a little behind the scenes, a little, little uh, shop talk. So let's say that there is a commercial going out there. Maybe it's a union spot. Maybe it's not a union spot. So uh, a commercial director isn't, they're not looking through stacks of headshots. They're not doing, they're not doing, they're not looking online. They're not looking at websites. They're not looking at IMDb pages. What they do is they put a call out to casting agencies uh, and uh, and that have talent signed to them and say, hey, here's the, here are the sides. Here's what we're looking for. We need, uh, you got two slots. You got four slots. You got six slots. So you want to, and then so the agency is going to send in, if they only have two slots, if they're a small agency, they're going to send in two people they send in that book the most stuff, which is why you see the same people, why you saw uh, the, the uh, Matt, uh, McCarthy. You don't know Matt McCarthy's name, but you know Matt McCarthy's face because there was a period of time where Matt McCarthy was red hot and he was in every commercial. Uh, Ptolemy Slocum is a guy you don't know his name, but you know Ptolemy Slocum. Uh, he's one of the scientists in uh, technicians in Westworld. And he was in Sopranos and he is a bit parts in all kinds of things. There are guys that just start booking. Um, and they get red hot. But also, those are the guys that are going out for that one spot, that two spots, that three spots that agency has. So a lot of people, because they only have a couple spots, uh, agencies, they only hire, they only have so many people under contract that they send out first. So when Seth Rogen became, uh, that was a good episode. Yeah, when Seth Rogen becomes... Um, a hot commodity well most agencies don't have a multiple Seth Rogen types you know they don't have they might have John Gabris they might have John Gemberling but they don't have another guy they got one guy they, they might have so they're gonna look for uh yeah you know, like I said they might have the roommate on uh on Broad City uh, but they don't have like two of those guys. So then they have people who will work for them for freelance, who they only call in for certain jobs. And so I went from beginning one audition a week, two auditions a week, if I'm lucky, to an audition offer a day because there was this brief window where they wanted Seth Rogen types uh, because I'm not a Jack Black type. I'm a big man, but I'm not that kind of big man. Uh, so I wasn't going out for those roles, but suddenly I could be a Seth Rogen type. They can send me out for a Seth Rogen type here and there. Oh yeah, I, I can laugh. I can play uh, goofy and and likable and lovable. Sure, all right, you can send me out for that. So I started getting offers a couple times a day to go out to things. I had two agencies that I was working freelance for 
that I was not signed with, but they would call me up for things. And I had a casting director who was small enough that she would do a lot of casting um, in-house, but she would get asked for, for recommendations. So I was going in under my own with her. And then if I booked any of these things, then I would sign some paperwork with the company and they would act as my, uh, my agency. But I wasn't official with any of them. Uh, and I wasn't necessarily booking all of these things, but the straw that broke the camel's back for me, where I suddenly was like, I have to quit this job uh, as a tech, was um, I had an audition for an HBO pilot. It never aired. It didn't go to series. It didn't go anywhere. Um, Jason Manzukis for How Did This Get Made? And Jessica St. Clair from BFF and uh, Playing House and a bunch of other stuff. They had a stage show at UCB. They adapted into a television series. And they they sold the pilot to HBO in order to, like, they got a pilot order. Shoot the pilot. Let's see what's going on. So they auditioned for this, right? And I get asked to audition for a role. And, I'm, and I schedule a time. And then there's a show, a show at UCB, and there are 11 people in the cast, and the only time they can, and, and all the times they say, like, they need a tech rehearsal, they need a tech rehearsal, I'm like, sure, okay, well, here's the options, here's what goes, this is my windows, these are when I'm available. None of those worked. What about this time? And I'm like, no, I have an audition. And like, and then I hear from my boss, one of my... One of my bosses is like, hey, I hear you're not accommodating because somebody told somebody that I was being shitty, which I wasn't. I gave them a bunch of options. I said that was not when I wasn't available. And like, this is a place where people like stopped teaching because they got jobs. Obviously, this was only an audition. It wasn't the same thing as getting a job, but it was a thing where I was like, I'm just not available this one time. I gave them all these other options. So I end up getting someone else to tech the show and do the rehearsal when they want to do it. And I was like, okay, well, people are not going to have my back if I get something. If I get this and have to take time off, it seems like people aren't going to have my back. And that is, that's why else am I here? Because I got that audition. Because, and we're going to take a pause for the cause, I got that audition because the part was fucking written for me. The character's name was Matt, and the description was a uh, loud, bearded guy, chubby, wearing an anime t-shirt. That is the character description for the character Matt, because it was fucking written for me with me in mind, but they couldn't tell me that. But it was... It was a they wrote a role for me uh, because Jason's character was part of a uh, like a screenwriting group, like a group that met at a coffee shop and and talked about like their script and all that. Uh, and all the characters in it were like uh, Bobby Moynihan played a character, Chris Gethard played a character, this uh, uh, actress and stand up uh, uh, Megan Nuringer and uh, a guy named Eric Tenoy. Um, we all played char- We all had characters that were loosely based on us. Um, that were all written basically for us. Uh, fun fact: There's a character in that show um, named Falcon that was met for a friend of mine uh, named Jesse Falcon. It was named after him, and that role went to a stand-up comedian named Mike Britt, who is definitely not Jesse Falcon. And that has happened to Jesse three times there is a character named falcon in an uh the reoccurring character named falcon in children's hospital that was written for jesse that he did not get he did not book and there was another character in a um uh uh manzukas and brian husky pilot that jesse auditioned for and did not get that was also named falcon they've done it three times jesse jesse eventually did play another character in children's hospital like once but he did not play the character that was named after him. Uh, because Falcon is just a great name for a character. His name is Jesse Falcon. Uh, but Jesse's not struggling because he is the VP of toy. He's one of the VP of toys for Marvel. Or sorry, sorry, for Disney. 
uh, Jesse Falcon started at Toy Biz, and then Toy Biz bought Marvel. So he went from being the VP of Toys for Toy Biz to the VP of Toys for Marvel, and then Disney bought Marvel, and now he is a VP at Disney. He has an at Disney.com email address, which is still what just bizarre. Falcon is a great name. His name is Jesse Falcon. It's a great name. He is a wild person and a wonderful improviser and comedian and a good friend. Um, I saw him at San Diego Comic-Con. We were staying at the same hotel, and I was so psyched, and we had breakfast together uh, because we were both just happy to be getting breakfast, uh, and it was just a lovely surprise. He's a he's a doll and a deer. Um, all right, we got to take apart this... Um, but yeah, he's a great dude and it was, um, it was just nice to, yeah. But, uh, but anyway, that pilot, that was like writing on the wall. Okay, Pat, you have to, you have to, uh, go freelance. You have to go part-time here. You're auditioning more and more. I did get some work. I did manage to do okay for myself uh, in the, in that world, in the world of auditions. Uh, you know, mostly local stuff, small stuff, uh, internet ads that didn't really go anywhere. You know, y- you book stuff that doesn't end up, that airs in televisions in, in areas you don't have TV. And even in the mid-2000s, sometimes not everything ended up online, so you don't have everything. But but I always did okay. I always did pretty okay with that. Um but that was the only time I chose to go freelance because uh, it's not chasing down and being being your own boss and, and chasing down work and chasing down payments particularly is never something that I wanted to do and I do not enjoy it and I would love to not do that anymore. I don't, I don't mind responsibility, but I do mind that part of it, the... Uh, this just the hustle. Uh, I'm not. I'm not built for that kind of hustle. Of like constantly, you know, talking to people that like you. That hey, you hired me to do a thing six months ago. Do you have anything else you'd like? Can I pitch you things? Do, are you accepting these things? Are you looking for part timers or full time in the position of the thing I did temporarily? Hey, I worked because so and so was on paternity leave. Uh, and I think I was a good fit with y'all. Do you, would you like to have me back to do something? Or, hey, did is everyone in your company transitioning well to work from home? Are you looking for someone? Did you know that I have Fios and a great internet connection? And an understand? I have a webcam and I understand how Zoom works. Like, I don't like this stuff. I don't like doing that. I don't like the hustle. I'm doing the hustle. do, 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 do do the hustle. Um, but I don't like the hustle. I would love to not have the hustle. I would love to instead have some sort of normal normalcy and a schedule of some kind that I stick to and work very hard at. Uh, we'll see if that is a possibility in my life. But right now it is not. Uh, but what is a possibility right now and in fact, is the reality is we're going to take a pause for the cause. Now, if you're new to the Build with Bear workshop, uh, if you're like, I do not know what a pause for the cause is, that's a radio thing. That means that we are going to take a brief break, just a short little break where I am going to chat with you about ways that you can support the channel if you'd like to. Uh, first and foremost, if you're currently a subscriber, you can go to the Bear Cave, the Lego, the site, the moat, and the chat. Let the people know that you are a subscriber. Uh, you are under no obligation to do that. Uh, if you don't already follow me, please consider giving me a follow, turning your notifications on so you know when I go live. That helps us. That helps me and what I do here very much. Uh, you don't have to become a subscriber. You don't have to do any of the things I'm going to list here of things that you can do. But if you'd like to do those things, it's rad and does support me and allow me to keep doing this in these legitimately uncertain times. Uh, Pat Bear is brought to you by Pat Bear, a division of Pat Bear. Yes. Welcome to uh, Bill with Bear Workshop, a Pat Bear production um, produced in association with Pat Bear, uh, supported by viewers like you. 
literally. And if you're like Pat, I like what you do. I don't want to become a subscriber on Twitch. I don't. I, my Twitch Prime token goes to somebody else. I don't have the cash right now. Do that. I get that. Uh, you don't have to. If you want to, you can. Uh, and a reminder: if you use Twitch Prime, you got to manually renew that. I also have a Patreon. You could join my dollar tier, and you get a Q and A video that is exclusive to the Patreon every month, as long as as well as my schedules. Um, patreoncom slash Bear. There's a three dollar, a five dollar on Monday. My three dollar, five dollar, and ten dollar tier are going to vote on what game I play on Wednesday. Wednesday is my bonus stream night where I play video games instead of doing building. Uh, and they're going to choose what I do on Wednesday. I've got some options of things that I think will be fun to, to try out or return to, and they're going to be able to vote on what I do. Uh, last work just described, that's as many days in May, uh, because that is 31 months on a 31-month streak. Please, let's shower. Let's throw that in there. I'm going to hit the gong there. I don't know why I hit the gong. 31 months, that's incredible. Last work, thank you so much. You can hit the applause button. That's incredible. Uh, thank you for uh, for your continued support. Uh, it means so much to me. Uh, also, a third... Oh, oh, play the soundboard. Let's play some soundboard. Uh, if you haven't seen this before, I got this for Christmas. Uh, it's a little soundboard here. We got the soundboard, and then I got the gong, and... We're basically a radio show, uh, a morning zoo crew. Uh, 31, it always gets me, Christian. Uh, 31 months, um, that's a real long time. And also, a 31-month uh, streak with Twitch Prime is very impressive, Lashbrook, because uh, you've got to keep an eye on that shit. Uh, so that's rad. Thank you so much for that. But yeah, if you want to be a subscriber... That's great. If you want to join my Patreon, you could do that. You can make a donation, a one-time donation. So anything that I make through Patreon, through um, uh, Twitch, through uh, donations, because there's uh, coffee and Streamlabs and uh, PayPal. Uh, when I'm streaming, anything that comes in through my donations goes to me building uh, kits, buying kits to build. Uh, so that's a great way to support the channel is to buy something from there because I will be picking stuff up. Uh... Speaking of things to buy, uh, I have an Amazon wish list. It's, it's, it, it needs a refresh, but these are times, these are tough times for a refresh. So right now, uh, I will be doing a refresh of it, but right now there's some stuff on my list that's not currently available. Anything you buy on that list, just make sure that it's got Twitch or uh, Amazon Prime shipping. It's going to take longer, but if you buy something on my wish list, it'll come to me, and I will. Uh, I will build it on the stream, and it'll jump the queue. I got Lego sets in there. I've got model kits. I've got uh, a wide variety of things. Some of them seem to be very expensive right now, uh, and some of them uh, do not have or aren't, aren't unavailable. Because uh, so I got really got to go through and, and redo that list a bunch, uh, and I will at some point soon. Um, and if you're like ah, Pat, I would buy something for you to build on the stream, but uh, I don't want to do it through that you could buy me a gift card from usa gundam store uh once again folks we will get back to building this lego set but uh, i do want to just go through quickly i have usa gundam store uh you can buy a gift card at usa gundam store uh and then you send me a whisper on here on twitch or dm on twitter because my dms are open and you send me a gift card uh and then i buy a model kit from uh usa gundam store and they're shipping stuff they send me emails every day they would love for me to buy something from them. I have a Discord. You can join my Discord. Uh, if you build stuff, if you do model kit building, if you want to see what folks in the community, uh, who the, the Bear Cave folks are, are building, uh, they post stuff that they're working on too. Uh, and that's a, a fun little uh, uh, Discord. It's very uh, low maintenance, low key Discord. You can join that. Uh, a couple links I want to share with you. Bearing the list. I put this out on Wednesday. Uh, I use Tier Maker to rank things. I ranked Uno cards and that doesn't, Uno cards isn't exciting, but like, I don't know. They needed to be ranked, and I ranked them. Because they needed to be ranked, y'all. I also ranked... Uh, ooh, my voice just cracked there a little bit. I also uh, did a Pet Bears Anime Club uh, that came out this past Monday. I'd make it every other Monday, and they're always about anime topics. This week's anime topic was manga. I just talked about some manga I really like. And... Uh, Made some recommendations of things you could be reading now. It's all uh, stuff that you can find 
collections that are still available out there in English, stuff you can find on streaming sites legally, or apps, I should say. Um, if you're looking for just like, I don't know, some stuff to read. If all of these anime that are going on hiatus uh, mean that you don't have stuff to do. Uh, uh, hello. Uh, no, I have not read that. Uh, 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 Christian, it's on my list. Uh, I actually don't read a lot. I, I, I my regulars and um, but it is on something that I am going to check out. I just haven't checked it out yet. And hello to you, uh, Guardian. Uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, all right. So it is after 10 p.m. It's time to talk about uh, anime that came out since the last stream. My last stream was on Thursday. And actually, technically, we're going to talk about the three shows that came out literally today because none of my Friday shows are currently in uh, having new episodes come out. Gallant Dino Episode 7 is the last Gallant Dino for a while. They are going on hiatus. It makes sense because half the show is live action. Um, and I have to imagine that this week's live action episode, it's the least weird of all of them. And the, sh and the live action portion has been pretty weird. So I have to imagine that at least some of it is because of the couldn't do all the stuff they wanted to do with it. I don't know for sure. I can't say for sure. It did feel less weird. But we'll start with Gal and Dino. If you're not watching Gal and Dino, it is a strange little uh, slice of life comedy show about a, uh, you know, a, a, a gal, you know, uh, Kade, uh, who is also roommates with a dinosaur that is very cartoonish in his appearance. This is a world where some people don't bat an eye of the fact that there's a dinosaur, where other people are like, what is happening right now? It all depends on the person, if they are freaked out or not about there being a dinosaur in this world. Uh, it is a strange little series. And the first part is basically what ends up happening is it is a collection of short little uh, stories, um, little episodes, mini episodes. And the 23 minutes is broken up into two animated things and usually one or two depending uh stories that are live action uh and little intercut interpersonal things that happen in between little jokes that happen in between them um that are sometimes done in faux uh um claymation setting which is kind of fun so anyway uh Keda is uh, Keda is sick um and dino goes out and is alone dino is like at a at a park playing by himself and dramatic sad music plays you know like one of those sad songs where you're like oh oh you know it's that kind of like in the anime thing of like wouldn't this be better with her but she's home sick with a cold well then we pan over and turns out that's not just music playing in the anime that's music that someone in the park is singing because a guy is traveling japan with his guitar, singing songs, trying to put smiles on people's faces and change the world. And Dino decides that that's what he can do to help out his gal is have uh, is have him come and serenade her. And then, oh, what's the twist, y'all? Well, he really sings loud like he is general singing voice is like he's singing he's shouting like he is the lead singer of a metal band uh and then dino dances and that fucking rules and then it's mostly that she's like well he tried really hard to make me feel better i like that <laughs> and that's kind of where it ends oh and then it also turns out he's he's becoming famous this musician who is a real musician whose name escapes me so that's the end of the first part then we have this thing where um, uh, the second story is uh, about the boyfriend. They broke up before Dino moved in. But Dino and him are like pals. And he's like, is she seeing anybody? And the Dino, does, the Dino doesn't understand, like, have any guys been over? And he's like... Yeah, a lot of them have been because he's thinking about like delivery people because apparently they get a lot of like food delivery and Amazon delivery and stuff. Uh, and they don't say Amazon, but you, you get what I'm saying. So he's like, oh, yeah, a lot of people or, you know, and of course, he doesn't 
miscommunication. Uh, what kind of research sample are you going to be hauling with that? Oh, I don't. I I don't know. We're making a we're making a big truck here. Uh, look, here's the thing. Uh, these uh, the 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 original of this the the first part of this was the burger truck, right? We we built the burger truck. Once we build the extra truck, um, uh, then they're like, "Hey, you can build other things with this." So we're building a big, you know, truck, and we're gonna build a tractor, and we're gonna haul wheels. That's the third one, as you can see there, the wheels. I don't know. This is just a big, big thing. We're putting it together. Honestly, when these, when this is done, and the third version is done, on my off time, I'm just gonna build the burger truck again because that's what I'd rather have is the burger truck. But much rather have that than the other options in my opinion anyway um uh, i think this episode proved to me that i don't understand japanese comedians yeah so i did want to say one thing that was very funny was so the ex-boyfriend misunderstands that a bunch of guys are coming over and she, he's gonna go and tell her how he feels and try to win her back and then the dino is like oh no i think i did something wrong so he chases after him and somehow the dinosaur gets back first which i think is just a very funny thing it is like because he even says like hey don't beat me there like it, it to me that that was like that was definitely this show is not subtle in any way shape or form it's generally just nonsense but i thought that was kind of funny that he like beat her to the punch and got there fat first i just thought that was kind of a funny little gag um, and I guess they're get back together and that's nice. And they all had hot pot together and that's fun. Um, and then the live action happened and the live action, sometimes the live action is starts the same place that the, um, the anime, the animated one starts. Uh, in this case, her, her back is hurt. She doesn't have a cold. She hurt her back. So... Like Lastbrook says, the solution, instead of getting a musician to come, the solution is get a bunch of Japanese comedians to come. Now, the thing I'll say, Lastbrook, is they even comment his choice of comedians are weird because one of them is a childish performer and the other one... I don't remember what his deal is. And then there was a comedy duo. Uh, there was like a straight man and the goofy guy that was like trying to like make up song, make up raps lyrics. Uh, and I can't describe it properly. Uh, I do appreciate that they had her laughing in the room while these guys were performing. Uh, I recognize the duo from some Japanese like programming that I've come in contact with. Uh, I don't remember their names, but they're all real working Japanese comedians. Uh, well, it's a thing of like they're they're just hiring weirdos. Uh, that's who I forgot last Brooke. The guy in the skimpy lion costume reenacting scenes from Lion King. Yeah, I don't understand why the guy in the homemade Lion King costume, like, I don't understand how that's his gimmick, but apparently that's his gimmick. It's like, I don't know, maybe it's the equivalent of people that have puppets in, like, I don't know. Exactly. Uh, Anthony, like, uh, the guy, the first comedian we see there is doing this, like, parody of a of a song that is, as far as I can tell, like, a children's song. Because I think he is a children's comedian. Because he is acting like a child. Or he's just acting like a child, and the way he acts like a child is by singing this children's song. And then he's, like, changing the lyrics. And I don't get it, and I don't understand what's going on. Uh... And it's, it, it is an odd thing for me to, what am I about to say is an odd thing to say. This was the least weird episode of Gal and Dino. An episode where the dinosaur got a bunch of random comedians to come in out of nowhere to cheer up his human friend is the least weird. The least weird episode. Uh, there was also an interstitial 
where he was at the laundromat and some girls were like, what's this thing? And they were like kind of mean and I did not enjoy it because I was like, don't be mean to Dino. Dino fucking rules. Also, this is the live action version. That's a fucking dinosaur. Show some respect, weird girls, weird teen girls at the laundromat at night because it was at night. He was just drying a stuffed animal out and it didn't mean anything. Uh, yeah, I don't know. All I can tell you is, overall, it wasn't my favorite episode. I think it was actually kind of touching in the beginning. And there was a level of sweetness where, like, you know, the dinosaur really does care about her. And he is trying uh, to, to help her out and to be a good roommate. Um, but it wasn't as weird as it's been. Because the last episode involved a smaller puppet version of him, which was unexplained. And this one was less weird somehow, but still nice. And now it's going on hiatus and I don't know what to tell you. Uh, my next life as a villainous, all roots lead to doom. Holy shit. Uh, this one was one, had the action that we've been missing. So if you haven't been watching, uh, my life is a villainous. It's an isekai with a twist. So it is a twist on the standard. It is a different world. It is someone who died and has been reborn and then uh, lives their life. But instead of it just being a normal fantasy game where, or like, oh, this is just like the MMO I used to play. And now I'm my character. Or this is a fantasy world with magic and mystery. And I've been given a second chance. Time for me to be an overpowered main character and to do all kinds of cool shit. This, in this game, or this series, uh, a uh, a girl that played a lot of, like, dating games, uh, auto otome games, like, visual novel dating games, realizes that she has woken up in the game that she played, and uh-oh, she's the main villain of the series, and uh-oh, there's no good ending for her. Her best ending, as the game plays out, is to be banished and exiled. Uh, and that's the best one. And then Eek points this out. So basically, because she's aware of this, but is still who she is, she's still the same weirdo that she was growing up at when she died at 17. Um, she's just by being herself, like goofily, accidentally trying to avoid... Uh, death flags and trying to change her reality she's ended up changing the characters in the game and made them different and characters that were like her adversaries are now her allies and folks that had like romantic interest with the main character she's had those interests and she's ended up building herself a little bit of a harem without realizing it uh she doesn't realize that like everybody's into her including uh, at least one of the female characters, whereas one of them is the only female character in her crew that wasn't into her, really wants her brother, is like rooting for her brother to, to end up with her. Um, and that always did feel a little weird. Uh, um, it always felt a little weird that she, um, uh, that Sophia wasn't into her because everybody else is like, she wants to be her friend and she's grateful to her. And they have a lot in common. Um, the thing they have in common the most is, uh, is that, um, she, they, they like romance novels, which now in hindsight was a clue, but at the time wasn't, uh, cause we also know that our main character, was pretty much a loner, played games, was an otaku, was a nerd, was a tomboy, loved climbing trees. We didn't know that. We did know that she had one friend. Our, her friend, A-chan, or A-chan, um, also played the game, also played this game, Fortune Lover, and actually played the one 
side story uh, that she didn't ever end up beating. She couldn't beat this one. Uh, the dark haired prince or the, there's one character. She never really did the storyline. That's Sophia's storyline and her brother. Uh, and then we, we get a flashback. So that's the thing. Usually when we get, once we hit this world, we rarely go back. Like in um, the very first episode, uh, one of the throwaway gags in uh, that time I got reincarnated as a slime is we see the co-worker that he saved uh, throw his uh, computer, our main guy's computer, into water and destroy it as like a, you know, like, because it's like, hey, hey, get rid of my computer, you know, destroy my hard drives, uh, which is a good gag, yeah. But usually... Once you're reborn, we only hear from the char the main character about, like, what their life was like before. Like, uh, eight son, the guy keeps going, like, I'm still an office worker at heart, right? Like, that's what we get. We get those references to people's former lives. Uh, we don't usually get a flashback that involves the character dying and the aftermath of that character dying. Cause we have, we have the girl's friend be really sad. And now we know pretty, pretty assuredly that she also got reincarnated as the care, as, as another character in this game, but has not revealed that. So, there are two characters that have reborn and I, there are definitely anime where multiple characters travel to dimensions like that are from the same world. Like I think a show like dog days, uh, uh, in you Yasha, there have been other characters that make the, t the trip as well. Like traveling to between worlds. Anime certainly happens. Um, but in, I've been reborn in a different world. I don't know of another anime where, two characters from this that knew each other have both been reincarnated in the same new world. And that's fucking crazy. More crazy than uh, the fact that there's somebody like guarding her and there was a whole, there were like stakes here. Uh, slime had multiples, even had multiple. Yes, dirty. Um, I, I, and yes, dirty. The, part of slime is all of those people that were reborn from other times and and his physical body i'm talking about people that know each other having the reborn happen in a game in a, in a game world kind of thing because i that that like that is that is a huge surprise it is a shocking thing uh it mentions the bombshell it is kind of a bombshell like like I said, we, we got some action. We got some chances for characters to have plot, which is a thing that happens in, in dating game things where suddenly the tone shift happens. So it is kind of keeping in that. Um, and we're starting to like, you know, because we're getting away from the storyline. We're even seeing her underlings, if she had been the villainous that she was supposed to be, if she had ended up being that villainous character, her underlings are now like in the way that they were used to be mad at Maria, they're now mad at her because she has all these people fawning over her and helping her and she's not all that or whatever. So we're starting to see that change. Um, and we'll see a few other changes, I'm sure, uh, as the thing goes on because characters have changed and like uh, Mary is basically uh, uh, Yadere is is borderline Yadere and that's not good. Um uh, she has her little rescue. She she gets rescued there. She gets Danzel rescued, uh, which was a little bit of a thing because I uh, Keith doesn't know that he's in love with her yet, which is not Keith, uh, the younger brother of the prince, who has a competitive thing where we're very competitive with each other. Um, uh, doesn't realize he's in love with her, but everybody else is like, no, yeah, um. So, I don't know. It was just interesting. It was like, uh, you know, there's there's some mystery going on there. And the the whole idea of, like, does Sophia ever say, like, hey, I'm your friend. 
Uh, and when did she, when did she get that knowledge? Was it when they met uh, and started hanging out? Is that when she started remembering her past life? Also, does that mean that she died when she was 17 or 18 uh, and got reborn? Does she also have a tragic end? An accident on the way to school? Uh, what does it mean to like have like multiples? Like, so weird. Uh, and yeah, when I say that, like, uh, I can't wait for the likely reveal that the secret route our friend talked about was a villainous route. Yeah, I don't know. So, there are two things that stand out to me. Uh, the brother, Sophia's brother was the route that she had never really tried. Because they're, they're, she, that's how we first learn about the friend. Because she played it. And then the other thing that, uh... We did is, uh, I mean, could the other person just lived on their own, like, without them? Well, I mean, that's generally what happens, right? Like, uh, our main character died and had two older brothers and parents that seemingly loved them and moved on. Generally, when you are reincarnated, like, into an into a isekai, uh, you leave people behind and they live their lives and move on. Uh, so we generally don't think about those people in the context of an isekai. So it is interesting to think about them. Uh, I don't know. It's a, it is a weird, it is a weird thing. But um, the, the, the main thing, uh, main, main takeaway is uh, the student council president guy who is, who is supposed to be a very minor character in the game. I don't know. I don't trust that dude. I got a bad feeling about that dude. I feel like I don't know. I do not know. But that my interpretation is that the game is changed. Like the the isekai has changed the game so much that, that it's based on that now we find out that like like there's a vacuum because she's not the main villain anymore. She's the main character. She's supplete. She planted Maria as the main character. So what does that mean? I don't know. I don't know. Um, and definitely Keith and Giorgio are gonna fight to the death probably <laughs> Mary may kill all of them uh, before because she is definitely in love uh, Sophia is you wonder if she's supporting people and she's trying to push for a brother does she have her full memories? I mean, she does say, I don't want to be separated from you again. Does she have her full memories of her previous life? Or is it bits and pieces? She does she have memories that they were together in a different world at a different time, but doesn't know that this is a video game that she used to play? We don't know. We don't know the extent of it. Um, and why she hasn't said anything. Because does she... She must... Because if she has those memories, she must realize that... Um, our main character is like, remem at least remembers some of it, their life. I don't know. It's odd. It's a good show that was that started off way funnier than I thought it was going to be, and is now way more like developed and interesting than I originally assumed it would be. And I am really on board. It is one of my favorite shows of the season. Obviously, this is a weird season where a lot of stuff went on hiatus and only started. Uh, so it is a it is a weird thing to be like, this is one of my favorite shows of the season. Because, like, what is this? What does that even mean in this context? But it is one of my favorite shows of the season. It's going to skip town by boat. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know where it ends up and, like, how things work out, but it is a, it is an interesting, uh, that's an interesting show. And uh, like I said, I'm, uh, I am very engaged with it and interested in it. Um, and I look forward to, to seeing more of it. Uh, it is one of the best shows of the season. Like I said, it's a, that's a weird thing to say, but, uh, R.I.P. Build Divers. Yeah, I mean, just like, look, everything's going on hiatus. Not, I mean, not everything, but a lot of things are on hiatus. Uh, 
yeah, I've been trying to keep track. Like I said, like um, All Roots Lead to Doom is still going, but uh, Gallon Dino is going to be on hiatus starting next week. And that that's a shame. And then, uh, let's see, it was anything else added that I, I particularly interested. Things got postponed. You know, that happens. Uh, um, so, uh, this episode, like I said earlier, uh, Kage-sama Love is War. Season 2, this episode was really poignant. And it was, like, really sweet. Uh, it was the end of the student uh, election arc. We are now going to have our new student council. And we will have a new person on the student council. Uh, and now we will see her interactions with the ro romance thing. We did have some moments of the romance element to it. Uh, we did have a few little bits of that. Of... Uh, of people wondering and, and working hard and being interested in one another. And uh, overall, it was mostly just kind of like a sweet episode. I did like the moment where the secretary and, and the treasurer were like, well, we uh, we were wondering if you want, would want us back on the student council since we're so, you know, dysfunctional. <laughs> it's just like hard agree. Uh, and he's like, yeah, no, of course. So that was that was kind of a sweet thing. Uh, oh yeah, Hisaka is is the underrated element of the show. Um, good elements of friendship and people being supportive of one another uh, and there for one another, which is really nice. And uh, not a lot of uh, uh, Chika there, but uh, she did have a little bit of fun when she was shushing a dude. And I don't know if she knew that she was, like, helping out by doing that or not. <laughs> that was, like, pretty good. I don't know. It was a, it was a, it was a fun enough episode. Um, it was a lot about a character that, like, we barely know and barely had any interest in. Uh, yes, her ninja vanish was pretty great. Um, but, yeah, I think, like, we're going to see more of the relationship. And now we've got... This character who is no nonsense that wants to get things done, which they all want to get things done, but there's also the ulterior motive that our two main characters have, which is convince the other one, convince them, uh, convincing the other one or tricking the other one into revealing their interest in one another so that they win the relationship. Uh, and uh, it'll be interesting to see if this new wrinkle of this no nonsense character who says what's on her mind. Uh, her, her, how she interacts with them, and if she's putting up with their relationship drama. So yeah, so new wrinkle in that. Like I said, just a solid good episode. Uh, so I think that they're just Ig. I think they're just like, uh. He's just known her because they're the same class, right? So I think he's just known her for a really long time and, like, just respects her and feels bad for her and pities her. Uh, but also, like, you know, one of the things that um, Ishigami is, is really seems to, to make him more than just. Uh, the weird character that says things to get him beat up um, by his female uh, friends. Um, one of the things he does have going for him being you know, the Dark and Gloom guy is that like he's got a lot of empathy and a lot of morals uh, which is which, which like generally manifest in the show in that like he has a lot of respect for people that do things that he is scared to do. Um Yeah. Well, I think that, like, the crushing... So, I think the crushing was, like... Um, crushing didn't just mean, like... I, here here was the interpretation I had about crusher means, is, no, I need you to win. I don't need her to lose. Because the implication was that she clams up, and because she is generally, like, a nuisance to people... They laugh at her, and she throws it for herself. He was like, I don't want her to lose 
because of what she did. I want you to win because of what you did. Uh, which is like nuanced and interesting. But it was like, no, 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 you be the reason she loses. Not she couldn't pull it off. Uh, and the landslide is just like, no, I want you to go out there and like kill it and like make it so, you know, like undoubtedly. And it, you know, and the landslide was just like a, a phrasing of it. He didn't actually mean the landslide. He mostly meant like, hey, go make sure that you kill it, that it's not her own ineptitude or her own nervousness that keeps her from getting what she wants, which happens apparently all the time is because he says this, he said that weeks ago in episodes ago, he was like, you actually don't have to worry about her. Uh, she's a lot in face to face, but she's her own biggest enemy and that turned out to be true so that was interesting like I said nuanced in a way that I'm not you know I wasn't super expecting from this show um, which is you know as I said this is my comedy that's so over the top where we've got two characters who are acting sundere a character trait I generally genuinely dislike that, well, because they're so over the top and so, like, nonsensical about it, it works. Whereas normally it is a thing that I very much dislike. I like it in this interpretation or this incarnation. Uh, well, we don't get that uh, in this episode. We just get sweet, nice character stuff. We get to see some people's vulnerability and we get to see some people supporting. Uh, and I really liked uh, uh, Kaguya being like, oh, he's just nice to everybody and he's supportive of everyone. I thought he was treating me special. This is just how he is with people. And then we find out, no, 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 he is. He does treat people like that, but he also is treating her special. I mean, she is the reason why he wanted to be, this, you know, her asking him to be president again is the reason why he did it again. Uh, and like I said, it's just a bit more nuanced of a show than I would have given it original credit for. Because I think the first season does have its nuances, but this season seems to be going even beyond that. And I can appreciate it and enjoy it. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I recommend it. Uh, I I've said this, even before... Uh, shows went off the air or went on hiatus uh, or, or, you know, or whatever that um, my favorite night was Saturday. Like my favorite, you know, Friday, Saturday, because especially like when I had um, we just starting up, we only got a few episodes in of like uh, um, God damn it. Food Wars was Friday. Like Friday was starting to be like a really good night. Uh, for anime, uh, Friday and Saturday, like this was a good double decker night of shows. Um, but now everything's on hiatus. <laughs> who knows? Who knows what'll be next? I miss Food Wars. Yeah, I mean, like, I said this going into this season that I wasn't sure, like, what the show had, like, the last season it ended, you know, the, that last plate, it ended so strongly that I was a little unsure of, did I really want to watch another one? And then like, they got me by having like, oh, well, this is the thing that we've mentioned in the past. And, you know, I don't really care about this new character, but there's a little like secret thing going on that like, maybe that's interesting. I don't know if it's going to be interesting, but then also... Megami has uh, is front and center and I was like well if you want to put my favorite character in the show and have her do stuff I'm getting there. Three of the six shows I'm watching are in hiatus. Yeah I mean like I watch a lot more than six and a bunch of them like Black Clover being off hurts um, my uh, Diary of Her Days at the Breakwater being on hiatus hurts because that show was uh was already was just starting to get its groove, and I really liked that show. Like, there are a few things that that went on hiatus that uh, that really felt like a bummer. 
uh, Black Clover is, is the one that like really feels weird because like I was watching that every week like as it airs uh, and it's just strange to not have that as a thing I can just watch all right got a couple more things to put on here We are almost done with our second vehicle here. Uh, Boruto also is not airing. Yes. Shows have been on for years. Yes. I mean, uh, One Piece and Boruto are on hiatus, and that both feel like that's a, that's like a strange thing. They're, you know, Boruto being the sequel to Naruto and One Piece not being on the air definitely feels like a strange bit of world uh, that we're in right now where those are not shows that you can watch. Uh, it's, it's odd. Um, all right. So we got to put our tires back on here. Going to put our big boy tires on. This is not obviously the monster truck incarnation, but still got to put these tires on here. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a, it is a strange time as Japan finally joins the rest of the world and not having entertainment out. And then as things get delayed. Uh, hey, John Robert. Welcome, welcome. Happy to have you here in the stream. Did uh, did that Zoom uh, wrap up? John Robert and I were both in a Zoom call earlier uh, with some friends all across the country. Very nice. Very nice hangout. It's lovely to see people. Also found out that if, as uh, somebody with a Zoom Unlimited, you can just set up a Zoom meeting and you don't have to be there. Uh, got some viewers here. Awesome, man. Yeah, got a few people hanging out on a Saturday. Saturday is usually my light night, so anybody that's here, always appreciate it. Thanks, everybody who's here. Um, uh, but yeah, Saturday is usually a little light for us. You come here on Thursday, we're talking 25, we're talking 30 people. Sometimes on a Thursday. Not always, but sometimes. Uh I only use Discord. Yeah, that's a, that is a long flight. Uh, yeah. Uh, no. So I, I have Zoom. I got the Zoom Unlimited, and I didn't know that you could you you know you can basically make a meeting because generally, if you just have regular old Zoom, uh, it only works for like forty minutes, and then you have to start a new thing, and that's fine. Um, but yeah. But yeah, it is uh, it is nice to have that uh, to have that way to like get in touch with people. I am still testing uh, for Wednesday. I do not know what it will be yet, but Wednesday the twenty seventh, uh, which is you know a week and a half away, uh, I will be doing some sort of thing that will involve other people on stream. My bonus stream will not be gaming; it'll be something else. Um, I do not know what it will be yet. But it will be something, uh, and I want people to come check that out uh, that Wednesday. But uh, I'm, you know, I got the Zoom Unlimited for at least a month, so I need to take advantage of that. Uh, the major thing is it seems hard to share audio. I have to look up some uh, um, tricks for sharing audio in your Zoom so that people who are watching the Zoom can hear you well. Uh, that seems to be an issue. I, I don't want it to be an issue because I want the people that are hanging out with to be able to hear me or hear the stuff I'm doing when you when you share your screen. So I got to figure that out. Uh, all right. So we finished our second vehicle here. Uh, we, You know, uh, this is the... I don't know. I don't know what this is supposed to be here. You know, some sort of tractor. Um, we will, I will, I will uh, disassemble this uh, for Monday's stream. And then we will build a third incarnation on Monday. I have a, uh, uh, I ran a poll that my Patreon, uh, $10 patrons voted on what I should build next. And I believe they voted on a, uh, an SD kit. Uh, yeah, that looks like that one, the Paul. So that'll be the next thing I build. 
um, which would be pretty goofy, uh, which is the um, uh, the Valky Lander. Um, it transforms into a dragon from a from a chibi to a dragon. So that that should be silly. Um, but uh, but yeah, this is the end of this kit. You can you can see. I'll show you. There are a lot of pieces because the three in ones basically the way the three in one works is. Uh, the main thing, in this case, the monster burger truck is most of the pieces, almost all of them. And then the other two incarnations use less of them. So I will disassemble this off stream and rebuild and get ready to rebuild um, our main thing in the future. But right now I am going to we're going to do the thing that we normally do at the end of every stream, which is we uh, we'll go here. Um. We're going to go and raid somebody. So sorry, folks, uh, if you came in here for, for building in the past couple minutes because uh, I do two-hour build streams. But we are going to go ahead and uh, and do a raid of another stream. And I don't know what, but I'm going to go and look to see who's streaming. And we will go visit somebody and check them out. It's a Saturday night. Sometimes people are streaming stuff. Sometimes they're not streaming friends of mine. Uh, I think we might go and check out a fun comedian friend of mine. Hi, Aristofan. Thanks for being here. I'm waiting for this ad to end. Uh, yes. All right. So we are going to go raid a uh, comedian and actor and all around good, good, good friend, uh, good person. Adam Conover is playing Dark Souls 3. First time. Uh, it's a charity stream, which is awesome. So we'll go raid uh, Adam. And if you feel like giving, please do. At least enjoy and cheering him on. And if he asks for uh, help, uh, give him help. But don't, don't spam his chat uh, with a bunch of nonsense. <laughs> and uh, tune in next Monday, 9 p.m. Eastern for my stream because uh, we will be building the third incarnation of this kit because uh, we built the second one here and it will be the third one and it'll be fun. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your Saturday. Uh, thanks for being here. Good night, everybody. Goodbye. Raid. Over.